Voilà, mesdames et messieurs, nous poursuivons nos travaux et j'ai maintenant le grand plaisir et l'honneur d'accueillir son Excellence, Monsieur Sharma Oli, le très honorable Premier ministre de la République fédérale démocratique du Népal. Excellence, au nom de la conférence, permettez-moi de vous remercier de votre présence et de vous formuler toute notre gratitude pour votre participation à notre Assemblée aujourd'hui. Prime Minister, you are leading Nepal through a critical period in its history as it transitioned to a federal, democratic and stable republic. The ILO has enjoyed excellent relations with Nepal since the country became a member in 1966. We have been privileged to work with Nepal, including in response to the challenges of conflicts and natural disasters. Prime Minister, you are committed to creating decent jobs to open up opportunities, especially for young people, so that they find hope at home. You have introduced an employment program to provide 100 days of guaranteed work for all Nepali. You are a champion of social protection with the combination of universal and a contributory social security system. You are pursuing the formalization of the Nepalese labor market. Prime Minister, you sum up your vision in a simple motto. Prosperous Nepal, happy Nepali. You believe that achieving decent work for all is a critical step toward achieving his, this goal. Thank you for being with us today. Your Excellency, you have the floor. President of the Centenary International Labor Conference, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Director General of ILO, Mr. Guy Ryder, Employers and Workers Representatives, Ladies and Gentlemen, Thank you, President, for your inspiring and generous introduction. We are gathered here today at a historic occasion to mark the centenary of the organization that pioneered in writing the most ambitious social contract in the history of of mankind. To mark the centenary of the vision and aspiration for a just, human, and equitable world, and to lay an equally educating foundation for the future, enduring foundation for the future. This centenary celebration of the International Labor Organization is a celebration of the rights of the toiling masses to social justice through social dialogue. I extend warm congratulations to ILO fraternity on this historic occasion. I feel deeply honored 
to be part of this momentous occasion and thank the Director General for the invitation. I have brought greetings and best wishes from the land of Sagarmatha, Mount Everest, and Lumini, the birthplace of Buddha and the fountain of Buddhism, for the success of this conference. Excellencies, the ILO's constitution was framed in the essence of the First World War. It reflected the collective desire and commitment of humanity to peace through social dialogue. It was a testimony that production relations can be transformed through dialogue. The core principles that ILO advanced, such as equal pay for equal value of work, freedom of association, working hours, adequate wage for living, balance between work and life, and social protection are its unique contributions to human civilization. These are not ordinary achievements. ILO is a trendsetter of the future. I would like to mention here two landmark initiatives of the last decade of the 20th century. Fundamental principles and rights at work in 1998 and the decent work agenda 1999. The report Work for a Bright Future of the Global Commission on the Future of Work provides us sound basis for our deliveries. I believe the report will set a discourse for another quarter of a century. Development of technology, shifting dem demography, migration and change in the organization of work are creating new paths to prosperity. On the other hand, they are disrupting the existing work arrangements. Technology has replaced traditional jobs, transformed the way we work, and created more innovative workplaces. Artificial intelligence, automation, robotics, internet, 3D printing, and blockchain are bringing profound changes in the way we imagine the world. The gig economy is providing millions an alternative to work remotely. However, every change comes with new opportunities and challenges. This provides an opportunity to define that our destiny remains at the human command, but not at the command of technology. An opportunity that we hand over a livable planet to our posterity and an opportunity to create a win-win situation through demographic dividend to supplement where human capital is in short supply. In managing the changes, we must keep women at the center of all. Investing in the people's capabilities, promoting entrepreneurship, and creating decent jobs are critical to avoid the changes. We must ensure gender equality, strengthen social protection, respect social dialogue, and guarantee rights at work. As the climate change is raging, demands in green jobs, 
climate actions will be much effective if they begin at the world of work. Green jobs would be the stepping stones towards green economy. Adequate wages and time sovereignty go hand in hand. That is the sign of prosperity and well-being of all workers. Labor is not commodity. ILO has a role to play that core principles of Philadelphia Declaration are upheld at all times. Persistent unemployment of youth builds political instability and engenders poverty. We must in this situation, Excellencies, Nepal is endowed with past nature, natural resources as well as rich demographic dividend. This makes future of the world work in Nepal highly promising. We have adopted home legal and policy reforms to address the dynamic international labor environment. We have domesticated the provisions of the fundamental ILO instruments to which we are a party. Our laws do not discriminate workers on the basis of the status, regular or irregular, outsourced or contractual, and those coming from organized or informal sector. We redefined the notion of life, long job by lifelong job by social protection to all workers irrespective of their nature of job, ensured fair balance between flexibility and social security, and legally indeed the dichotomy of formal versus informal sector. This way, we have successfully concluded the process of formalizing the informal sector. Excellencies, Nepal's democratic constitution is founded on the ideals of equality, non-discrimination, and social justice. Democracy without economic right and social justice remains incomplete. Our conception of democracy goes beyond the formalities such as formation of political party, participation in electoral process of it, or enjoyment of the freedom of expressions. Ours is a comprehensive democracy that empowers individual in all dimensions, political, economic, social, and cultural. Our constitution embodies social justice, right against exploitation, rights to work, remuneration and social security, as well as right to trade union, uh, trade union and collective bargaining. The rights to education, healthcare, food, housing, culture, and language are guarantees as fundamental rights of our people. We have enacted a number of implementing legislations to enforce the fundamental rights, including those related to the world of work. The entire life of an individual is covered by social security system. In childhood and old age, the state provides universal social security. In active age, workers are protected through 
contribution-based social security. This provision has been incorporated in the Social Security Act. Last year, in November, we launched a comprehensive social security scheme to the working people. This largest ever social security undertaking in Nepal is being implemented through contribution from both the workers and employers and covers benefits such as unemployment, maternity, sickness, old age, accident, dependent family members, and disability. For past 25 years, Nepal has been providing old age pension to the senior citizens and monthly allowances to single women and those coming from the most marginalized section of our society. There has, has been graduated, there, there has been gradual increment in the amount and coverage of this critical gas handout. This year in February, we launched at another employment-based social security scheme under the Prime Minister Employment Program. This flagship program aims to create jobs, guarantees employment to every working age citizen, provides allowances in case of unemployment, promotes innovation and entrepreneurship, and supports skilling, reskilling, and upskilling. To change the production, to change the production relations, we have introduced new sets of labor laws that safeguard dignity of work, guarantee equal pay for the equal value of work, and ensure flexibility in the world of work. The Trade Union Act protects collective rights of our workers in the line with ILO Convention 87 and 98. Excellencies, inclusive, inclusion remains a basic tenet of our policy. Special measures are in place to ensure inclusion of all sections of our society in the state organs. One third representation of women is guaranteed in the federal parliament and provincial assemblies. Elections in 2017 have resulted over 41 percent of women's representation in elected bodies. Excellencies, enterprises are the drivers of modern economy that provides job and implement ILO standards. Our actions should support them to grow, create more jobs, and sustain economy by jobs with entrepreneurship, with of entrepreneurship. Enterprises, SMEs, start up, ups, and send self-employment. Decent jobs for our youths and social security to all are a key to address the job deficit. Migrant workers are often vulnerable to high recruitment cost. Contract substitution, unsafe and unsecured working conditions, and non-compliance of terms of employment. Nepal being a country of origin as well as destination, we consider that the global compact for safe, orderly, and regular migration adopted in December last year provides a framework for cooperation. Our role in the ILO governing body and UN Women Rights Council is informed by the basic premises of GCM to make labor migration safe, orderly, and beneficial to all. 
dear brothers and sisters, we have created institutional framework for social dialogue at the federal, provincial, local, and enterprise levels. Through a common platform of Joint Trade Union Coordination Center, Nepal practices a unique example of unity in diversity of trade unions. This distinct forum of workers represents all working people in Nepal to engage in social dialogue and promotes their interest in a spirit of solidarity and harmonious labor relations. Presence of Tripart Right Forum at the center has resulted in improved labor relations that have brought down the labor disputes among almost to not. The government ensures employees compliance through labor audit that provides an opportunity for reflection, self-assessment, and improvement. Labor inspection and inspection of occupational safety and health are the integral part of labor audit. The world of work in Nepal has voluntarily evolved a social contract to implement rights-related issues and engage in collective agreements to safeguard the interest. Excellencies, Nepal's own demo democratic struggles drew significant inspiration from the work of ILO as many of our trade union leaders were the torch bearers of resistance against autocracy and pioneer of the democratic movements. Over five decades of my public life, I have brought for equal, equality, I have fought for equality and social justice for our people. The government under my leadership is focused on realizing the national aspiration of prosperous Nepal, happy Nepal. For prosperity, we need skilled labor. This helps foster prosperity, which should lead to happiness. In this context, we want to define it as Shaksham Shramik, Samriddha Nepal, Sukhi Nepali, meaning skilled workers, prosperous Nepal, happy Nepali, to underpin our agenda for decent work, ways, and workplace. Ladies and gentlemen, we intend to end all forms of deprivation and exploitation, ensure equitable development, and establish a socialism-oriented state as envisioned by our Constitution. We aim to end the worst form of child labor by 2022 and all forms of child labor by 2025. We are committed to meeting SDGs before 2030, including the SDG 8 composite in all its dimensions. With this objective in mind, Nepal joined the Alliance 8.7 as a pathfinder country. To conclude, Mr. President, 100 years on, the preamble words of the ILO's constitution continue to re resonate in this assembly hall, calling for reaffirmation to social justice and lasting peace. We must meet this moral minimum and move forward to address more pressing issues of our time. Today is the time to uphold ILO's founding ideas, ideals, and demonstrate that they continue to be relevant in furthering the value of human worth, equality, social justice, and sustainable future. Let us deliberate on how ILO can 
secure its own future and the future of its tripartite constituents. I am confident the outcome, document of this centenary event adequately reflects on that important aspect of the organism. I thank you all. Thank you very much. Excellence Premier ministre, je tiens vraiment à vous remercier pour vos paroles dont nous garderons la pertinence et la sagesse dans nos mémoires pour orienter nos activités des prochains jours et au-delà. Une fois encore, au nom de mes collègues et des délégués de cette 108e Conférence internationale du travail, je vous remercie pour votre présence devant notre Assemblée aujourd'hui. Merci beaucoup. Mesdames et messieurs, comme d'habitude, nous restons en place assis dans la salle et nous laissons le temps au directeur général de raccompagner son excellence le Premier ministre du Népal et nous reprendrons nos travaux dans quelques minutes avec la visite de son excellence M. Cyril Ramaphosa, président de la République sud-africaine.